What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up your RGH R2 marine gauge hole receiver. So as you can see, it comes with the receiver itself, a remote with a 33 foot extension cable, a USB extension cord, a wire harness, and the mounting hardware for your receiver. Now to mount the receiver onto your boat, you're gonna take the mounting template that comes with the receiver, line it up to wherever you want it placed, and follow the cutout guide to make the proper hole for your receiver. Depending on your setup, you might wanna wire everything first before you mount your receiver onto your boat. After you do that, you can take off the front of the receiver like this, and then use the included screws to secure your receiver. Now you can also mount your remote inside of your boat as well. So to do that, you're just gonna take this remote here, take off the washers and nuts on the back, then you're gonna take this mounting bracket here and line it up to the two screws on the back of your remote, and then run the washers and nuts back onto the screws to secure the bracket. Now, if the arms of the bracket are too long for your setup, you can use the appropriate tools to make the cuts here on these ridges. Now, depending on where you have your remote set up, you can use the 33 foot extension cord here, plug this female end into the male end of your remote, then plug the male end of your extension cord into the wire remote input put here on the back of your receiver. Again, depending on your setup, you might wanna do the wiring first before you install it into your boat. Now, if we take a look at the back of the receiver, you'll see we have all of these different wires, inputs, and outputs that all serve a different purpose for your receiver. Now, the wire harness here connects right onto the back of the receiver here, just like this. So on the back of the harness, we have the 12 volt power, ground, accessory, and remote wires. The accessory wire runs to the ignition of your boat, so whenever you power on your boat, the receiver will power on as well. Then we have the 12 volt power wire, which connects to the 12 volt of your house battery. Then we have the ground wire, which goes to the ground terminal of your house battery. Then we have the remote output, which can run to an external amplifier that's powering even more speakers in your setup. And this will make it so that the amp powers on as soon as the receiver does. Now, because we're obviously not on a boat today, we're gonna run our accessory wire to the positive of our battery. But remember, you're gonna run this accessory wire to the ignition of your boat or accessory line if that's available. So to connect these lines to your battery or ignition, you're gonna take some leads, connect one end to the accessory, 12 volt ground and remote wire, then take the other ends and plug them into the connections we mentioned earlier. So the 12 volt will go to the 12 volt of your battery. The ground will go into the ground of your battery. The accessory wire will go into the ignition or accessory line of your vehicle. And if you're using the external amplifier, you're gonna run the remote out to the remote terminal of your amp. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that boats are powered by two batteries run in series for 24 volts of power. So you have one engine battery and one house battery. For setting up your receiver, you're gonna wanna run everything we've gone over before to your house battery, including the RCA aux input here that we can use to run external devices like MP3 players, CD players, etc. We also have the USB input so we can plug in any USB flash drive to play music. And we also have the USB extension cable that we can use so we don't have to run to the back of the receiver every time we wanna plug in a USB drive. We also have two sets of RCA preamp outputs. So we have one for our front speakers and one for our rear speakers. So if you're using a four channel amplifier, you can plug the RCAs for your front speakers into two channels and the RCA for the rear channels into the other two channels. You can also run these to your external powered speakers to expand your setup. We also have the antenna port to strengthen our signal for the AM and FM radio. We also have the RCA sub output that we can use to run to an external powered subwoofer or amplifier that's powering a subwoofer. Again, if you're using an amplifier to extend your setup further, you're just going to run this remote wire to the remote input of your amplifier. We also have all these different speaker wire to connect the speakers right to our receiver. So we have the front left speaker, which is indicated by the white wires here with the plain wire acting as the positive and the one with the black stripe as the negative. Then we have the front right speaker channel indicated by the gray wires. Again, with the plain wire acting as the positive and the one with the black stripe as the negative. We also have channels for our rear speakers. So we have the left rear speaker with the green wire with the plain wire acting as the positive and the one with the black stripe as the negative. And then the rear right speaker is connected through the purple wires here. Again, with the plane acting as the positive and the one with the black stripe as the negative. Now on the front of the receiver, you'll see we have a power button to turn the receiver on and off. And this also acts as a mute button. So let's go ahead and power the receiver. On the left, we have the band button to switch between the AM and FM radio, manually save radio stations. And while you're in USB mode, you can use this button to display the artist name, 
track name, and the album it's on. We also have the APS button that we can use to scan through radio stations, repeat tracks in USB mode, or you can also hold this button down to select the track menu and select your tracks from there. We also have buttons for music playback, including the pause or play button, the previous and next buttons that allow us to select tracks, fast forward or rewind in USB mode, and manually search for radio stations in radio mode. We also have buttons to raise or lower the volume. We also have the mode button to set the receiver either to Bluetooth, radio, USB, or aux mode. And if we hold the mode button down, we can access the settings for the receiver, which includes the bass menu that allows us to fine tune the bass for our overall setup, the treble menu that allows us to adjust the treble for our setup, the balance menu to adjust the stereo image, the fader to adjust the mix between the front and the right speakers, the loudness setting, which is great for listening to your music at low volume with a balanced sound, and the tuner for your area or region. And remember, you can control all these settings with the wired remote. So to connect your smartphone or tablet to the receiver, you're first going to set your receiver to Bluetooth mode, which we have already here. You'll then see it says BT Music, and while it's flashing, this means it's unpaired. So then we can go into the Bluetooth settings of our smartphone or tablet, search for the device that reads RGHR2, click on it to pair, and once your receiver reads connected, you'll know that your devices are paired. So I have some speakers connected to the receiver, so let's hear how it sounds. So far, so good. You hear it out of all of the speakers. All right, wait for the song to drop here. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Sounds great. Woo. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your RGHR2 marine gauge hole receiver. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.